everything in life is moving way too fast, how do you intentionally slow down? How do you prioritize the rhythm of your life? How do you break out of the societal flow and live at a more sustainable pace? How do you, as Dallas Willard so aptly put it, ruthlessly eliminate hurry? I don't know the answers to all these questions, but on a journey across the Dolomite Mountains in northern Italy, hiking between mountain huts through some of the most staggeringly beautiful terrain on earth alongside one of my best friends, I certainly found some clues. Our tendency is to move quickly, efficiently, systematically, effectively. But it doesn't take a long time in a wild place to discover that efficiency is simply not enough. Sometimes it is required, but to focus solely on moving from point A to point B as quickly as possible will cause us to miss where we are. The intricacy of patterns in the rocks, trees, and sky, the sheer grandeur of the landscape, the feel of the chill wind whipping at your face. None of it can be fully experienced if your eyes remain stuck on the trail ahead of you. We must pause often and walk only as quickly as the moment demands. Moving either too slowly or too quickly can ultimately make it difficult for us to arrive where we are meant to. A storm may dictate that we prioritize moving as quickly as possible in order to, well, not die. But we must be careful to slow down again once the storm has passed. Knowing when to push hard, when to slow down, and when to stop entirely is what gives us the capacity to go further than we can imagine. In our day-to-day -day lives, it's not often that we actively experience wonder. That feeling of having our attention captured by something profound. Sometimes it takes a wild place to reignite that childlike sense of being enraptured by something completely new and entirely beautiful. In a place such as this, there is no shortage of wonder. It sits around nearly every corner. And if the pace of your walk is as it should be, it is impossible to miss. It may be full of awe and glory, or it may be soft something that is often missed. Either way, wonder serves as the basis for hope, for presence, and for love. It would do us well to seek it as often as we can. As I have returned home, and as you conclude watching, let us consider how we can live with these in mind even when we are not granted the luxury of being in an exceptionally beautiful place. Learning to slow down, seeking wonder, and cultivating awareness of rhythm is not something we can only learn in the Dolomites. It is something we can all choose to practice, little by little, one step at a time, learning to live as more of who we are meant to be. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.